Hey there, welcome to the Agents of Revival podcast. If you're ready to be healed and take full accountability of your life by evolving into your best self, then this is the podcast for you. I am your host, Andrea Griffin Rogers, and I'll share with you winning steps as well as personal tips and anecdotes on how to go from brokenness to wholeness and from scattered pieces to inner peace. So come on in and join me on this healing journey and let's become whole together. Enjoy it. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, guys? How are you? Happy, happy, merry summer. It's been a hot one, (laughs) y'all. I don't know where you at, but I know where I'm at. Here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it has been a hot summer. And I don't mean what culture says. I mean, like, the temperatures have been up and we have been experiencing a heat wave. Nevertheless... I am full of joy today. I tell you, the joy of the Lord has been my strength. I, I, it really, I, you know, I heard that when I was growing up, you know, spoken by, um, you know, it's, it's a scripture, but it was spoken by a, a lot of the, what we would say, seasoned saints, the people who are older in the church. And, uh, and I didn't understand that. Just like I said in the last episode, you know, I didn't understand when they would say, you will understand it better by and by. I didn't get that. <laughs> Just like I didn't get like the joy of the Lord is my strength. What? <laughs> you know, like make that plain to me. I don't understand. How can the joy of the Lord be your strength? Like I didn't get it, but I really do get it now. When you delight yourself in the Lord and the things of the Lord, he really does make your heart feel full. You know, the Bible says it like this in Psalms 37 verse four, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiant like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. And so, uh, again, that's Psalms 37, starting at the fourth verse and I read down to the sixth verse. What is so interesting about this passage and what I've just been experiencing lately in my life is truly that by me delighting myself in the Lord and and operating moving forward in the things that he has placed on my heart to desire because I want to make this disclaimer really quickly and I talk about this on my YouTube channel and the message I taught the other day called all I have is all I need um a lot of times we think that God gives us the desires of our heart that we put there ourselves, that we plan ourselves. And so the things that we want, God's going to give us the desires for. That's not how God works. He gives you what to desire. And so that's why it starts with take the light in the Lord. There then is a comma. And he will give you your heart's desires. He will give you what to desire in your heart. And so that's what he's been doing in my life. And as I have been holding on to the promises and, and holding on to the the belief of what God wants to do in my life and really walking by faith and not by sight that I already have it. And what I mean by that is, you know, to people looking, they may not can see that I already have it. But because I received the promise from God, then I already know because according to his word in Isaiah 55, his word is not going to return back to him void. There's no return to sender when God promises something to you. So I can walk by faith and not by sight, even though I don't physically have it right now in my hand, uh, so to speak, that it's already done. And that's me walking out my faith. And so as I've been doing that, y'all, the the joy of the Lord has truly become my strength. And I have just been feeling so overwhelmed in this beautiful joy and in the midst of that joy and I know I started today a little bit differently so just bear with me in the midst of that joy I started singing this song uh, and when it came out it wasn't the first song I gravitated towards off the album called Overflow by Transformation Worship um, which is a part of Transformation Church with Pastor Mike Todd um I, I grabbed it to one song first, um, but which was a song called Impossible Nothing at All. However, when I heard Anchored, oh, baby. And if you've seen the title, then you then you have some, you know, idea of a little bit of what I'm talking about. 
But if you've never heard this song, go check it out. It's an amazing song with uh, Torin Wells and Fred Hammond. And when I heard Anchored, oh my gosh, I fell in love. <laughs> and it has been like my theme music for the summer. It it has, uh, I want to say that and Transformations uh, Worships, another song that came out recently or album that came out recently called Dominion. Those two songs have just been my like go-to first songs I'm playing, first songs is, is singing in my mind, but especially and particularly for today's message, the anchored song. And one of the things that he says in the song by Torin Wells, which is my favorite, absolutely favorite part of the song, says, send me, I'll go where you'll lead, I'll follow. I trust your word for you hope tomorrow. My eyes on you, my savior, my anchor. And then he continues on in the message again, like repeating what I just said. And so in the midst of me singing this song over and over again, and then me hearing it when I first wake up in the morning. So God is waking me up to the song in my heart. And um, and then throughout the day, I'm either playing it on repeat on my iPhone or it's just repeating in my spirit. And it's mainly that particular hook that particular part of the song i just cannot get over it and so finally i heard god ask me why do you think that is and that's a good question <laughs> because i didn't know I, I guess i didn't think i didn't go deeper speaking of anchored <laughs> and you know boats have anchors and they drop the anchor in the deep of the water i didn't go deeper to ask god why this song has been re in repeat in my spirit, why I keep being drawn to this particular part of the song. You know, there's other beautiful words that, that are other beautiful lyrics that are in this song. But it's this particular hook that I just could not get over. I, I just I just keep singing it to God. Like, send me, I'll go where you lead. I'll follow. I trust your word for you hold tomorrow. My eyes on you. And so... I asked God back his question. I said, well, why has it been in my spirit lately? And it was a reminder that he then took me to the next song of nothing's impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. So if you just believe that when God speaks a word, as Pastor Mike Todd says in the, excuse me, in the song, he says, you know, when God speaks the word, it is done. And he does this laugh that cracks me up. And so, you know, you can receive what God speaks, but it's according to your faith. And the reason why I titled today, Purified Faith, What Are You Anchored To? Is because a lot of times, as I've seen in culture and I once experienced it in my own life, we anchor ourselves we or we drop our anchor rather to the wrong things basically means that we hold on to and believe in the wrong resources thinking that they are our ultimate source and what happens when that source is taken away from you Ooh. what happens when you're going through a season where god is purifying your faith and what does purifying means we learn in the Bible in John chapter 15, it is a process or a time or a season where God will start to cut away um, and, and things that are not working or that was working in a season in your life, but he still cuts it away in order for you to produce more fruit. And so to read John 15 to you, it says it this way. I am the grapevine. This is Jesus talking. I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes or purifies the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I'll remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it 
will be granted. And so, uh, for those that are not reading along with me in your Bible, but you want to take notes, that was John chapter 15, starting at the first verse and reading down to the seventh verse. What we see in this text is that when you allow God to take you through a purifying time or a purifying season to cut away some things, some people even that are no longer serving purpose in your life, it then helps you to anchor yourself or attach yourself to the right source, the right thing, the right person, basically. And that is Jesus Christ. We have seen, especially since COVID, a lot of people anchor themselves to their job. They anchor themselves to their bank accounts, their 401ks, their Roth IRAs. They anchor themselves to, um, you know, a, a particular person, a, a family member, a friend, a spouse, somebody that they feel like is going to always be around. And, and you've put all your hope and your faith in and your belief that this person is going to make you happy and, and they're going to help you when you're down and they're going to always be there. And that's a lot of pressure on people because people are human beings just like you we're all flawed and we all have an expiration date and so when you anchor yourself to the wrong thing what happens when it's removed and now your faith is tested now you're shaking a bit because you were holding on to something that was shifting sands it wasn't a rock it wasn't a cornerstone that can actually help you and keep you anchored keep you down keep you strong when you're feeling weak keep you um happy when you're feeling sad keep you full of joy fill you up with peace when the storms are crashing and the waves are crashing all around you and so today i kind of wanted to talk about that because like i said i was um I've been spending some time, as you guys know, I've been on vacation, so you haven't had any podcast episodes from me in a while. Um, and in that vacation, I had a, a couple things happen. One in particular was um, somebody who was in our community, I mentioned this before, who passed away. And when the hope of this person passed away, um, you know, because they are no longer here on earth anymore, they've transitioned to heavenly places, which is beautiful. I remember feeling uh, such joy, even though the tears were coming down my face to hear the news. And I remember trying to uh, figure out why God did you move in this way? You know, I was believing for their healing and for, um, for them to live a longer life than what they did. Because we gotta be, we gotta be careful when we say uh, live a long life. Because your life is long compared to your assignment, not compared to an age. So again, if you anchor the existence of your time here on Earth based on what culture says or what people say is a long filled life, then you miss what God is doing in the Earth. A long filled life is if you have fulfilled your assignment in the Earth. And so you can, as I said, this person was 49. And if you missed the last episode, then you have to, you know, go back to really catch up on what I'm talking about. But in the last episode, you know, I talked about how this person was only 49 years old. And so we say that and we're like, oh, my gosh, like they were so young, but they lived a full life. They fulfilled their their assignment in the earth. And God gave them the allotted time in order to not only get it right to be purified in him so that they can have the faith that they need, the hope that they need in him, but then also to be the blessing unto others that God was blessed to them. We have to understand that we are comforted or um, blessed, as the Bible says, to be a blessing. It talks about it in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 4. It says it like this. Um, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. So understand that you don't go through things in life just for your own self or your own lonesome. It is for you to be a blessing to somebody else. And it could be a blessing of telling your story. And so this particular person who was a part of our community in Ages of Revival, you know, because 
she came to know Jesus through this ministry. She then was able to pour out what she learned and what she experienced and the, the blossoming of the fruit that's being produced in her life onto others. She was able to sow those seeds of faith that was not in her family onto people in her family. And so though we may look at her life and we're like, oh, she left so early uh, for those of us that knew her. And you may have somebody in your life that you are right now grieving the process of them of of them leaving. And, and you may be looking at like their age, for example, of like, oh, they were going too soon. Were they? Or have they fulfilled their purpose? And you just need to look at what seeds they sown in your life. Because her purpose was to not only know Jesus for herself and to be baptized into the faith, but it was also for her to then plant the seeds of faith in her family. That was a part of her legacy that she now was able to leave behind to her children and her grandchildren who did not know Jesus Christ before, except for, as I said before, her son, one of her sons. That was it. And so she was able to open this door that God wanted opened up in her family's life to so that they could receive salvation. And we'll, you know, I don't, I don't, I won't know basically how those seeds blossom. We never know um, sometimes how the seeds may blossom that we, that we sow into others, but you got to trust that just as a seed was sown into you and it has grown in you, that when you sow that seed into somebody else of faith or of doing a good thing for them or being a blessing unto them, that God is going to multiply it. Even if it may take time because you don't know what they're going through in their life. And so sometimes we can throw seeds and they might land, but then they might land and stay dormant in the person's heart. And it's not until the right season when it is meant to start germinating that that seed again eventually begins to open up and then produce the fruit uh, of the good harvest in their lives. But we can't not move just because of us not seeing the fruit yet. And so I wanted to say that out there, I feel like that, that somebody needs to hear that. Um, but when you have the right anchor in your life, even when it comes to something like grief, you're able to overcome it. And I know there may be some of you out there that's like, you don't understand this pain I'm in. I do. I do. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. You probably have never heard me talk about my Joe Wilderness the season. And it's a lot that happened in that short span since 2014 um to about 2021 but uh or really 2022 it was a uh, a lot that happened in that time to me just and, and that's not even my whole story because there's a lot more that happened in my my childhood but just in those years from 2014 to 2022 it was a lot that happened to me and I remember um feeling the the heaviness of the grief when my grandparents passed away because they we were so close you couldn't tell that that I wasn't birthed from them that's how close we were especially with me and my grandmother and so when they passed I felt like an orphan even though my biological parents are still alive we did not share the relationship that I had with my grandparents and so that pain oh my gosh that that was that that was a hurtful pain. Like I, I can't even give you the proper words to describe the excruciating pain that that was. It felt like somebody cut my heart out and then had an elephant stump on it and then kicked it and the alligator and, and, you know, in the waters grabbed it and snacked on it and then gave me back the, the few shreds that was left. I mean, it, <laughs> and that's a bit graphic, but it, it was that painful. And I remember at that time, my anchors were my grandparents. And I don't mean in the way that people probably thought. I meant that they were my cheerleaders. They were the ones that kept me encouraged. They were the ones that um, when I was sad and down, I can call them and talk to them. When I was feeling up and cheerful and had good news, I'm calling to talk to them. I could tell them about all of it, the good, bad, the ugly, and they did not judge me. They were there to support me, to strengthen me, to empower me, to lead me, to guide me. And so when they left, there was that void 
And I remember feeling like, God, what do I do now? Clearly, I must be about to die because this pain feels like death in my heart. And I feel fulfilled my purpose at that time of taking care of my grandparents. So what is there left to do? And through a process that I even talked about before where, you know, I, I did sadly try to commit suicide and thank God that he held back the hand of death and I survived it. Um, where God took me on a journey to help me realize I need you to have your anchor in me. And I remember um, if this actually was a recent vision. I want to say within the last few months, I think around December uh, 2023 that God gave me where he kind of talked to me about um, n- now that I'm in a place of healing or rather being healed. He talked to me about my grandmother. And uh, for those out there, that's like, what do you mean? He talked to you. I am one of God's prophets. It's, it's a not something that I take lightly, not something I even caught myself as who God has called me to be. And so God does speak to me through visions and dreams and, um, and, and tells me like, what he you know wants to see or done or articulate and so in the dream he says something to me and i hope this encourages those out there and particularly who are grieving the loss of somebody in your life god asked me a question in the dream he said why do you think i've done this to you and of course you know some people i kind of hear your response even now like some people may respond and feel like oh because you want to see me in pain no 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 no. then you do not know who your god is because that's satan that wants to see you in pain not god and and I'm and so my response because I do know my God and I have a relationship with Him and I've cultivated this relationship over years and years and years of time and and practice and and practical application. Um, I I didn't know, and He said I did not take, I did not take you through this process, or I did not take the you know your grandmother away from you, the people that you love away from you. For those of you that are listening, I didn't take them away from you because. I I just wanted you to be in this pain. No, I removed them so that you can learn to trust in yourself and also trust in the God who created you. Basically saying to me to make it a little bit more plainer for you in terms of this message today, I did this so that you can learn to anchor yourself in me or in God. And so again, I asked the question, what are you anchored to? Was or who were you anchored to? Are you is your anchor in your marriage? And I don't want to go too deep into marriages right now, but I will say something that I have experienced and not directly yet, but I have or in a way, but I have experienced it through, um, you know, people close to me in their marriages and, and them sharing with me that. Even in marriages, if you anchor yourself to your spouse in such a way where they have to be your happiness, they have to be your all in all, and and, and if they don't show up, you're miserable, where you can't even survive, then you have misplaced your anchor. Because that power should only be to God first. Because your spouse is a human being. Don't have the expectation on them to be your all in all. They're not. They're not your savior and they're not your Lord. Therefore, they're, they are going to drop the ball. And if you fully put your anchor in them, and like I said earlier, and the sand shift, then you're hurt looking at them because they didn't meet your expectations. How are you managing your expectations in this season of your life? Are your expectations in people and things of this world or is your expectation in God? As I was saying earlier, the reason why this song has been stirring in my heart so much is because my anchor or my expectations is in God fulfilling his word that he gave. It's not something that I dreamed the desire just for myself. It is the desire and dream that God gave me, the promise basically that God gave me. And so as a result, my anchor is in him. And since my anchor is in him, my expectation is also in him to fulfill his promise, to fulfill his word, his word, excuse me. And the Bible says that he that has begun a great work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus return. 
the he that they're that the Bible is talking about said capital H, which means God. God who began the great work in you will be faithful enough or consistent enough, committed enough to make it come to pass. As long as your anchor is in him. But if your anchor is in this world or your anchor is even in you and your strength or another person, then it's shifting sands. And so when the wind comes and it's going to blow the sand away, then you'll be looking, trying to scramble to figure out what's going on. And again, we saw that with COVID, where a lot of people built their house on a shifting sand. And when the winds came and knocked it down, they had nothing else to stand on. What are you anchored to? It's time, y'all, to have your faith purified. And I believe in this season that God is doing that in a lot of people. That he is pulling people closer to him, drawing people closer to him. He's taking some of you through some processes that seem hurtful, that seem painful. Maybe even right now you're going through the process. You're going through a trying time and you don't understand, like, why is this happening to me? And you and you feel like this woe is me. Um, weight on your shoulders or on your heart and you're weary and you're carrying this heavy burden that feels like you got to make it happen and God is saying no 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 I just need you to drop your anchor in me and let me give you rest let me teach you let me show you the way keep your eyes on me and if you live according to the way that I'm going to show you then I'll give you everything you've ever uh, can ask me for or the desires of your heart, I'll give it to you. But you got to drop your anchor into the Father. For those that need scripture, go read it. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, which talks about how Jesus wants you to come to him, who, who those of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and he will give you rest. And then go a few chapters back to Matthew 6, verse 33. Where it says, seek first the kingdom of God or seek first the Lord's face and his righteousness. Or live, depending on what translation you're reading, or live in his righteousness. That means live according to his will for your life. And then everything else will be added unto you. If you read a little bit above that, it talks about, like, don't worry about the things of this world. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, and and, and and all the things that that, pay, that plague excuse me, the minds of the unbelievers in this world. God is calling you to believe in him, to put your anchor, your stake, your belief, your hope, your everything in him. And as you do that, you now put the mandate on God to move in your life. But as long as you keep trying to make it happen, then you no longer have the mandate on God to make it happen. And it's now on you to make it happen. Anything that you make happen, you have to sustain. But when you give it to God, then he sustains and not only sustains, he multiplies. God's math is very different than earthly math. Because even the things that he cut away. He will, he will give back or reproduce in your life sevenfold. Double for the trouble that you went through. We see that in the book of Job, chapter 42. That Job got back even double, even more than what he lost in the previous season. And for those that are new um, and you've heard me maybe on my YouTube channel or on this podcast talk about the Job wilderness season, that's what I talk about that, you know, and like the man in the Bible named Job, I went through a similar, a, a very, very, very similar season. Um, and it, and I don't call it that just because of the scripture or the story in the Bible. I call it that because God told me before I entered into it that he was taking me through a Job season. And... So, yeah, you know, but God doesn't want you to suffer for suffering's sake. He doesn't want to see his children in pain, but he does use pain to purify you. He does use the, the, the trials and the tribulations and the challenges and the storms in our lives to not only get our attention, but to draw us closer to him so that he can teach us his ways. 
He uses it to get us on the right path. We see that in the book of Jonah. And I wish that I can, like, this wasn't even the way I was going to go with this message. I had planned on going with this message another way, but I feel like God is taking me this way. And so we want to just continue journeying on until our time is up, you know, because people, like God really wants you to anchor yourself in him. It is very important. You may be going through a purifying time right now, but it's a time of testing to purify your faith. as it talks about in James chapter one, so that when you, when your faith has been tested, you will come out purified, brighter, shinier, worth more than gold, complete and whole, needing nothing because you've anchored yourself in the only source and sustainer which is God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and his Holy Spirit. And so it's time to take an evaluation, y'all. Like, like, like let's have a, a, a check-in in this moment, a wellness check-in in this moment to evaluate where you are, are. Where are you right now? Look at your heart posture. Look at the state of your life. Really look at, you know, every morning, for example, when you wake up, do you give God thanks? Do you pray or is the first thing you grab is your phone? Is the first thing you grab is your remote control to turn on the news? Like, what are you anchoring yourself in? Do you really think that the news has more information for you, for your life specifically, and for your destiny than God does? Are you not scheduling God in or are you scheduling God in into your busy schedule? And that's something that I've been learning in this season as well is I've had to do away with my schedules, you know, like, and it's not to say completely, you know, God is a God of DC and order, but there are moments where God will say like, scrap the schedule. I need your time right now. I need your attention right now. And as his prophet, there are times when he wakes me up at one, two, three o'clock in the morning. And, and, and let me, let me say this as well. It doesn't just have to be a prophet. Like you could be a person who got me wake up early in the morning and you may be scratching your head trying to figure out why am I waking up this early and I can't go back to sleep. It's because God wants your attention. He wants time with you. And since he can't get the time with you during the day, because you may be so busy, um, you know, about your agenda and your plan, he wakes you up early in the middle of the night or the early morning hours to get your attention and when that happens to you just a a tip for those out there who have never done this before or who have this question of like oh yeah I do be having moments where I wake up in the morning and I just don't know what to do and I'm trying to you know go back to sleep and I may turn the tv on I'm read or read a book or turn some music on I'm tossing a turn in don't do any of that when you find yourself waking up in the midnight hour and and I don't mean exactly midnight it could be one two three o'clock in the morning but you know, it's before the time you were meant to get up that you had maybe scheduled your alarm clock to get up and you're trying to figure out why am I up this early? And I'm still, you know, you still want to go to sleep or whatever. And you're, you're trying to figure out why you're up this early. Pray. One of the quickest things that I that I've prayed in moments like that is, OK, God, what do you want to speak to me in this moment? Speak, Lord, your service is listening. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Very quick, very simple. Really took 30 seconds. And then I wait. I wait to hear the still soft voice or small voice as it says in First Kings 19 of God's voice giving me direction. And for those out there that have never heard God's voice for yourself before or you don't really know his voice that well for yourself, then it may be an impression on your heart. A thought that comes to your mind, your, you know, your conscience may say, hmm, uh, go read this. Or forgive that person. Or, um, you know, go and make a plan to contact this person later on to get it right, to apologize or something like that. Or it could be, um, go watch this video. Go Google this name. Go Google this book. Because I've had that happen too where God has spoken to me. Now, this was in a vision. But he, you know, right before I woke up from the vision... He had, you know, spoke to me about a particular book and I thought nothing of it. I woke up, though I had wrote it down. I didn't plan on going to go look up the book, but I couldn't go back to sleep. 
And so I realized, okay, God, you want me to look up this book right now. And I did. I looked at the book and I read the book and I realized like, oh, wow, look at what God was trying to tell me and teach me in this book. And I wound up, of course, buying the book after sampling it on Apple Books because it was just so profound. It was like what I needed in that moment. It was basically like an answer prayer. So, you know, God will speak to you in different ways to get your attention. So if it's in the midnight midnight hour, early in the morning, and you're like, or even late at night, and you just find yourself tossing and turning all night long, you know you're tired, but you can't go to sleep. That's because God who gives us rest, again, as the Bible says in Matthew 11, um, verse 28, It's God trying to get your attention. And so you have to stop in that moment to say, okay, God, I'm listening. What are you trying to say to me? Where are you trying to guide me? What should I be doing in this moment then if not going to sleep? And I promise you this, if you're obedient to get that wisdom from God and then move immediately when he tells you to move, after you fulfill the assignment or the instruction that he gave you, he'll put you to sleep. <laughs> and you will find yourself having the best sleep ever. Because, I, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I, all the time, all the time, God speaks to me at the most inopportune, sometimes, in my opinion, inconvenient times. It's like, Jesus, I want to go back to sleep, <laughs> you know, but he'll speak to me. And it's like, okay, Lord, what what is it, you know? What what do you have to speak to me, Lord? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to read? And then once I do that and the assignment is done, then I'm lulled right back to sleep like a baby. Like rock a baby. You know, I'm basically rock right back to sleep as if nothing ever happened. And when I wake up, I am energized. I am refreshed. I am replenished. I feel good. I feel like I just had the best sleep of my life. It's only when you keep fighting it and you keep trying to toss and turn and ignore God and his beckoning cry to you, beckoning call to you, beckoning um, impression on your heart that he wants to spend time with you, that you are misreading because you can't see God. So you think it's something in the natural, but it's something in the spiritual. And he wants you to, again, draw deeper into the oceans, into the realm, into the into the atmosphere of him. This is why it's important for you to be anchored in him. And as you anchor yourself in him, as I said before, your faith becomes purified. But you've got to be willing to anchor yourself first. Jesus stands at the door and he knocks at your heart. Revelation 3 verse 20, guys. He knocks at your heart. He says, "If you if you hear me and you answer, I will come in and we will share a meal together. You got to be willing to open up your heart. You got to be willing to lay down your life. You got to be for one's friend. Jesus wants to be your friend. He wants to be your your protector, your provider, your Lord, your Savior, your lover, your, your everything. He doesn't want you to put that in people. He wants you to put it in him. And as you put it in him, he gives you the desires of your heart that is a ple- that is appeasing and is the will of the Lord. And he guides you on the, the trajectory of that path towards those things but it's according to your faith that you'll receive it and so um there was so much more i wanted to share with you guys but i hear the lord tell me to wrap it up and so i'm gonna be obedient myself (laughs) so i just talked a lot about obedience and do just that um i want to leave you guys with these thoughts and just just think about them. Just reflect on it for yourself. That these wellness this wellness check in moment that we're gonna have together before I go and um, end you out in prayer. Are you willing to truly be led by Jesus down a road less traveled? Are you willing to truly be led by Jesus down a road less traveled? The reason why I say it's a road less traveled is because not everybody's willing to. Walk the 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 narrow path to heaven or the gateway to heaven, as it says in the Bible in Matthew chapter seven. There are many people that want to go the easy, the fast, the quick way, which the Bible calls it the highway to hell in Matthew chapter seven. And many people find that way, 
And they are on a fast track to hell. Because they are worshiping Satan synagogue. They are worshiping the things of this world. They have anchored themselves to the easy peasy life. The the doggy dog life of this world. The corruption of this world. And that's all they care about. But God is saying to you today. Will you anchor yourself in me? So basically are you truly willing to be led. With Jesus down a road less traveled. And you may be the only one walking this road right now. You know, some of your friends, you might have to let them go. They may have to be the ones that are purified out of your life for a time or forever. They may be cut away, basically. They may be pruned out of your life. Because the Bible says in Amos, uh, I think it's Amos chapter 3 or, Amos, or 6 and 3, it says, how can two walk together unless they agree upon a direction or agree upon the path? And so you may be in a friendship group or even in a relationship where you're courting somebody and y'all don't agree on a direction anymore. You're trying to get your life together and they don't want to. You're trying to anchor yourself in Jesus and they're not trying to. You're trying, my fellas out there, you're trying to lead this woman closer to God and she ain't trying to do it. Or you want to be married for women and men out there and the other person don't want to. So you're not agreeing on a direction anymore. So it's time to cut away and cut your losses and follow Jesus down a road less travel. As you follow Jesus in a road less travel, he's going to lead you to the desires of your heart, especially for a marriage out there. If you want to be married and you're single, you don't want that just because you want it. You want it because God put it in your heart to have it. It's a plan he has for you. And so as you travel down this road following Jesus, he will ultimately lead you there. But it's a very narrow path and you've never been in that road before. And so that means you got to be willing to drop your anchor or basically hold the hand of Jesus and let him guide you. You will not have control on this path. The path, the, the highway to hell, yeah, you got control over that. You can do whatever you want to do. But the narrow path to heaven, you don't have control over that. You have never been this way before and it's not your kingdom. It is God's kingdom. So you... Drop your anchor with God and or Jesus rather and let him lead you. His Holy Spirit will help guide you. So that's the first question. Second question, are you willing, which ties into the first one, are you willing to let Jesus take the will of your heart? Even if that means you have to sacrifice your comfort levels for his greater glory. Yeah, like I said before, there may be some people, some relationships that you wanted to hold on to, some People that you thought were going to be your ride or die, you know, your your homeboy, homegirls forever and ever. And God may say, no, no, no. And just like me, either they may pass away or he may remove them from your life and you never see them away. They may fade away or he may give you the the um, grace and capacity to have a conversation that maybe a hard conversation that you need to have in order to cut that relationship down to 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 basically end that relationship or that friendship. But either way, are you willing to let Jesus guide you down this road, take the wheel of, of the car of your heart, even if it means it mean even if it means sacrificing your comfort zone, your comfort levels? Are you willing to be uncomfortable for a season in order to see the harvest of what God has in store for you in an, in another season? Everything's about balance, y'all. And we cannot keep praying for things that we want, but we're not preparing for it. You got to be willing to maintain pure motives in this season. And purity is something that has to be stewarded. And so how are you stewarding your, your faith right now? How are you stewarding your resources right now? How are you stewarding your time right now? What are you willing to give in return to see this victory or this salvation or this promise that you want played out and manifested in the earth and in your life? It's going to take something from you. There is a cost. Luke chapter 14 talks about the cost of discipleship. It doesn't just mean the cost of following Jesus. It means the cost of anything in your life. That's why he uses the example of building. You don't start building a structure or a house without counting the cost of if you have what it takes to completely build it. Because you may start building a foundation and then get halfway up and realize you don't have the money to finish it. 
Then that's why it's about going to war. And the next example, count the cost. Don't just go to war if you haven't counted, if you have the the resources and the military strategy and capacity and the people to help fight the battle with you. Because you'll go to war and be defeated by your enemy. And so, again, it, this all ties into what are you anchored to? And then lastly, what promises are you willing to walk away from? Or what promises are you expecting to receive from God? And I know some of you may say, wait a minute, that don't make sense. Why don't I walk away from my promises? If you're being disobedient to God, you're walking away. If you're choosing not to anchor your life in the in the direction, the journey of the path that he's taking you on, then you are choosing to walk away from the promises. And so the reason why I ask the question that way is because it, it sparks a different response in you to realize, wait a minute, I don't want to leave any of our promises. <laughs> I don't want to leave anything on the table. It's like somebody who... um. It's your birthday and they have all these birthday gifts for you and your favorite cake or favorite dessert or whatever. And then they say, or you could leave it and get nothing. The majority of people going to be like, no, I want my birthday gifts. I want birthday cake. I want my celebration. I want all of it. But there are some people, there very few, but there still are some people who will say, I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing. I don't want to do nothing. And basically what you're saying is, I don't want to be anything. And I believe that if you've listened to this podcast and if you continue to listen to this podcast, and if you're listening to this episode, even to the end, you want something from God. You want your promises from God. You want your prayers answered. And so what are you willing to do to get it? Where are you willing to place your anchor? In the world? That's fleeting, that's shifting sands, or in God, the only cornerstone, the only solid rock to build your faith and foundation on. What are you anchored to? And so we got to get out of here, guys. I thank you for spending time with me today. Man, I, I, I can't wait to come back, y'all, for season six. I mean, I hope you guys enjoying are enjoying, excuse me, these um, bonus episodes this summer. I do miss you guys. Uh, as I shared before, and I want to reiterate um, in this episode that um, in season six, I am going to be adding a bonus segment called Dear Andrea. And it is a time where I get to um, interact with you. And what that means is over the course of this summer, I am taking letters from you guys so you send me your letters to the email address that i'll give you in one second and you title it dear andrea and you you know share with me your questions or your um you know your remarks on how this uh ministry has been blessing you if some of you want prayers you can also send that and of course we won't share your prayers on air but as far as your questions or some of your comments they will be read on air by me and so this is your moment in time to not only shine, but to also interact with me. I want to hear from you. So again, my fellas, my ladies out there, uh, please join me in the Dear Andrea segment. Send your questions, your letters, your comments to this email address, Rogers at gmail.com. It's all one word. And it's also going to be seen in the description of this uh, podcast episode, Rogers at gmail dot com uh get your entries in so that you can hear your podcast i mean excuse me you can hear your letter being read or your commentary being read on the podcast of um season six and again for those that are anxious and I, I'm, I'm happy that you want more we will be back with season six in the autumn and we will be going down to once a week with season six. So it won't be every day like it has been for the past five seasons. Thank God for his grace. <laughs> we will be going down to once a week. So I hope to hear from you guys soon. Until next time, take care. 
Love you guys. Love yourself, man. Love yourself. Know yourself. Take care of yourself so that you can be the best version of yourself for others and for the advancement of God's kingdom. Deuces. Bye now.